thank you for the, uh, for the perfect introduction. I think um, given this summit is called the future of content and media innovation, I think we're very lucky to be able to kick off today with um, two experts in media from two kind of very different walks of life. So we've got Kelly Williams, the, uh, the MD of commercial for ITV, who is an expert in UK media and broadcast, and Stefan Karub, who is the CEO of RTL Ad Alliance, um, based kind of out outside of the UK and has a really interesting perspective on European media and broadcast. I think the perfect place to start, really, for us today, we talked about this um, last week, is the increasing options for consumers. I think more than ever, the options for content and consumers has exploded in a very short space of time. Um, and that brings complexity for advertisers as well, and many of you in the room. So with more places to consume content um, and more places to spend your advertising dollars, um, I think we've got two people here that can kind of help us kind of unpick the two things very specifically. I read an article last week um, that was an interview with Jerry Seinfeld in GQ, actually, and he was talking about the cultural moments that movies used to create. So going to the movies, having a comp with friends planned and talk and then spending the next month or so quoting that movie and talking about it with friends. He now describes the, the kind of the content ecosystem as a fire hose of content pointed at your face at all times. So I think that's where I want to start. So ITV specifically has spent a great deal of time, effort and money kind of perfecting its platforms and consumer experience because those options are endless. And making sure that the consumer experience is bang on is really important. But on the flip side of that, the advertiser experience is equally as important. So when there is endless options for spending money, how have you both differentiated your product to make it easier and more seamless for people to spend money in a more meaningful way with your brands? Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, um, welcome to ITV. Um, look, I guess I get the first thing I'd say... Is this on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, think it, I think it becomes really hard for advertisers. You know, audiences are fragmenting... Uh, significantly as a result of all of this content being fired at them. And look, when, when I think about advertising, I think, um, so, so I heard a stat the other day, I think, I think on average we, we see 5,000 advertising messages per day. So as an advertiser, um, you know, you've got to really stand out. You've got to be really impactful if, if people are going to remember you. You know, ultimately advertising is a competition for memory. Um, so look, what, what, what we do, I guess, at ITV is try, we're, trying to, uh, we're trying to create a number of powerful propositions for advertisers. We have always, and we continue to have kind of mass reach at ITV. We are the, you know, the biggest, uh, biggest broadcaster in the UK. So we deliver that mass reach in a brand safe environment. But what we've added to that over the last few years is we're creating addressability at scale. You know, that's what ITVX is all about. We've invested a huge amount of money in ITVX. We have 40 million registered users on the platform. Uh, we've seen audiences grow 60% last year, and they're up another 50% this year. So we have addressability at scale, combined with our, our, our ability to deliver mass reach. We're also trying to, because we are a pub publish, sorry, because we, because we are an integrated producer broadcaster, we produce about 70 to 75% of all of our content. We can, we can offer advertisers a fantastic creative opportunity uh, so we can integrate brands throughout our, our, um, our shows. You know, Love Island, I think, is a great example where we can really get brands close to that content. So we're building multi-partnership propositions around our, our shows. We used to have one sponsor, one partner to a show. We now have... Uh, uh, several for each show. So that's been a, a big part of what we try to do. So, so it's, it's about combining mass reach, addressability at scale, creativity at scale, and then there's digital ad solutions. So it's using our data, the 40 million registered users that we have, to create really interesting 
data-driven propositions. And the final thing that we've just really started to do, which I don't think TV's been very good at historically, is we've, we've invested heavily in what we call outcomes. Um, we've, we've tended to sell what I would call outputs. We, we sell eyeballs, we sell reach and frequency, but we're now building an outcomes proposition. So we are building uh, uh, tools and initiatives that not only prove the effectiveness of your TV advertising, but will also prove the effect that TV advertising has on your other media choices, which I think is really, really important. So that's what we're trying to do, is create those four or five very powerful propositions for advertisers. Before I jump over to you, Stefan, so when you talk about outcomes, can you clarify, is that knitting all the products together to create kind of a audience first, impact first product, or is it making it easier for people to pick and choose which one's gonna work for them? Or both. Uh, so sorry. So, 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 um, so from an outcomes perspective, look, the, the things that we're we're trialing is, is is just what it's 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 um, we've got we've got a number of propositions. So for example, a great example of it is we've just done a great big study with Omnicom with about thirty seven of their uh, their brands where we've where we've we've knitted together. Um, the effect that te uh, television advertising has on your performance in the Google search auction. Um, so that, that's one example. So that's specifically about uh, search. Uh, another example is what we call a product called GeoX, where we've taken what, what, what I'd call was the old-fashioned regional test into the 21st century. So, um, you know, example of a brand recently who was, who was questioning whether they should use TV. Uh, we did a trial with them where they, they advertised in one region of the country uh, and, didn't, and, and, and clearly didn't in another. Um, and we plugged into their Google Analytics and we could, we could see the uplift in sales in the region. Uh, and we, but we could also see the, uh, the, uh, that it improved the cost per click in that region and it improved, the, again, their performance in the search. Audience. So, so we just... We just, um, we just you know, we're, we're probably in the foothills of this. We've, we've, probably been, we've, we've probably been working on it for about a year or two. I think the next big thing we need to do as a television industry, and I talked to my colleagues at Channel 4 and Sky, because it's expensive to do, it, to, to do this, because you have to buy, we have to buy the data in. We're not a Google, we're not a Meta, we're not an Amazon who has all of that data. We're buying it in, so it's expensive to do, but we're investing in it. But I think the, the most powerful thing will be um, we're looking to collaborate with Sky and Channel 4 because ultimately we're trying to prove the effectiveness of telly, not the effectiveness of ITV. So I think collaboration in this area is probably going to be the next thing you see this year. Okay, thank you. Stefan, on that initial question around differentiating yourselves, the RTL Ad Alliance platform is purely kind of there to simplify audiences across a geographic area. So w what have you guys done and why and is it working? So first of all, thank you very much for uh, hosting me, and uh, thanks to Brand Innovators. We've been partnering with them uh, quite a long, for quite a long time in the US. I think it's amazing what you've done there. And uh, well, we're very happy to see you here now in, in Europe and see how many people you've been able to uh, gather around us. So thank you. Um, so RTL at the lines, just for those who don't know exactly what we are, so we are RTL Group. We have uh, media operations, broadcast companies uh, and broadcasters in many countries in Europe, including France, Germany, uh, Benelux, Eastern countries, some, some shares in Antenna Trust in, uh, in Spain. But over the years, we've been able to, let's say, connect those different uh, uh, local champions plus additional non-RTL group companies, including ITV, who, with whom we've... Uh, uh, with which we've collaborating for quite a long time, but also other media owners, companies across Europe, from the broadcasting industry, from uh, the CTV space, from uh, publishing groups like Figaro, Guardian, and others. So what we are trying to do is really to combine those big brands, those big premium publishers together in order to, let's say, fight back or uh, bring an alternative to the global owners and, and, and the global players. And why do we do that? Because we believe that, you know, connecting with consumers across the world, or as, and especially here in Europe, is a high level of complexity. Um, you know, we have uh, media owner, uh, brand owners today. I don't know how you do it, honestly, when I see the level of complexity in advertising. 
Um, it's not because of my gray hair, but uh, or white hair. Um, I've been in this industry for quite a long time, and I, I, if you look at it from a, a perspective, like 20 years ago, doing a big campaign and reach your consumers was pretty easy. It was TV, definitely a little bit of radio, print, and off we go. Now you see the complexity. What do you do? Of course, you have the digital extension of what I said before, of digital extension of TV, with VOD, AVOD, hybrid, uh, of radio, audio, podcast, everything, plus the rest. I don't know how you choose it. So you need to have guidance. You need to have uh, counsels and advisors, and this is what we're trying to do to the advertising market to bring simplicity uh, to advertisers. And on the other side, if I look at it from a consumer perspective, uh, we published last week a third edition of a uh, media study, what we call it the new life of the living room. We are analyzing how people are consuming the big screen in their living room in 10 countries in a connected world. So uh, connected TV, linear broadcasters, uh, SVOD, AVOD players, etc. So we've been analyzing this whole thing. And we came out with a, uh, uh, you know, an observation. Uh, there's a paradox, a huge paradox in terms of choice. People have, you know, there's never been so much choice at hand, but it's so difficult to find your way and to find something that fits your tastes. So we need to make sure that we are simplifying the access as well to the content from a customer perspective. And this is what we're trying to do at RTL Alliance. We have many, I would say, uh, products. We have launched a uh, video marketplace, uh, thanks to technology. Uh, you can buy a programmatic uh, campaign across 15 countries in Europe, including ITV, including M6 in France, including RTL in Germany, out of one buy, out of one place. These are the initiatives that we bring to the market. Thank you. So before we go on to probably slightly more tech conversation and measurement, I want to take a kind of step back and talk a little bit around the cultural significance television has and broadcast has. So it's undeniable that it has a kind of real cultural place in most of the Western markets and others. I think whether that's live TV, live sport, broadcast video on demand, or streaming, connected TV, whatever the kind of preference or platform, it's content moments that I think um, are, are important to television. And I think it's the societal importance that TV has because it brings things that other platforms don't, be it news and, and live broadcast. What are you doing, Kelly, as, as ITV, to kind of preserve the cultural significance that TV has within our homes? And to your point around people choosing what they watch on their big screen in their homes, what are you doing to preserve that? And how has digital innovation helped make that happen for more of the audience in the UK? So I come, I come back to the, the point about advertising being this competition for memory. You know, if, you, if you're going to win that, you've got to, um, you've got to emotionally engage. Um, and, and look, that's what I think television does, uh, is it emotionally engages with, uh, with, with the audience. So what we're trying to do is, 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 is produce emotionally engaging content. And I think... I think television can have a cultural impact, as you said, across all the genres. So, you know, we had, we had a big drama at the beginning of this year called uh, Mr. Bates versus the Post Office, which, which just blew up out of nowhere. And it was, it was a show that was very, it's very UK specific, but shone a light on, you know, one of the biggest uh, miscarriages of justice in the, in the UK. And, and that show did three million viewers live, but because we have a catch-up service uh, in, in ITVX, it's now, it's now reached 14 million people, that drama. And it's a great example, I think, of a show that has great storytelling. It has, you know, t TV has high attention metrics. It has high trust metrics. And it creates, um, you know, creates a shared story. And I think that's what, that's what advertisers use TV for. Um, uh, so look, that's what we're trying to do, and look, I think every single genre can can deliver that. But I equally think I equally think great advertising can have cultural impact. You know, we 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 we've we've worked with eBay, for example, on Love Island for the last two years, and it has really changed the story in the UK, uh, changed society's view on fast fashion versus pre-loved fashion, 
And I think that's, that's when television advertising is its most powerful. We have, we have a partnership with Heineken Zero um, across all of our soaps in the UK. Uh, uh, it, we've product placed it in all of the pubs in, in the soaps. And again, it's changed, starting to help change the conversation about non-alcoholic beer in, the, in this country. We have a big partnership with Boots. Uh, uh, on our daytime show this morning, um, they, you know, they, they sponsor the menopause bus and it's changing the conversation in the UK about menopause. So I think great advertising can have cultural impact. Just the creative on its own uh, of advertising can have great cultural impact. And I just think, um, you know, in this world where, you know, as an advertiser, it's got, it gets much more, much more complicated to reach your audiences effectively i think i just encourage you to remember I, I i think i think you can get a competitive advantage uh as an advertiser if you do three things really well high quality creative use high quality media th with high quality measurement and data those three things i think are absolutely crucial i think if you do one of those you'll, you'll do be doing well but if you do all three I think you'll create a, a very significant competitive advantage. I think that's a pretty pretty good rule of three for anyone that's spending money. So, Stefan, if, if ITV are creating cultural moments and spending the money to invest in content, and we'll come back to maybe, if we, if we, get, if we get some time, we'll come back to uh, Mr. Bates versus the post office and, and, and how, how that works. But if, if you've got publisher-based media owners that you work with creating cultural moments, how are you using digital to make sure that that can get to that can support advertisers' ambitions to reach an audience? Because if they're creating the moment and you you aren't creating the moments, but you are kind of selling them, yeah. so how is digital innovation helping you reach more people? So, so first of all, I think we're really coming from a legacy publisher content developers and owners. So uh, yes, we are a sales house, but we're we're coming from that DNA. And we believe that TV is just is more than TV. I'm sorry to use your, your, uh, your claims, Kelly. Uh, but at RTL, we believe TV is total video. So meaning it's combination of linear, non-linear, on-demand uh, moments. So we need to follow the consumers. We need to also answer to what they want, how they want to access the content, when they want to access the content. And I think that's where uh, innovation and uh, digitization comes into play. Um, on the other side, I think TV, linear TV, is by far not dead. You know, I'm hearing every year that's the end of TV. Uh, viewing, viewing is going down. Uh, it's uh, unbelievable. You know, do you do you do you still know? Still know? I'm saying you are experts in the room. But do you still know that in Europe? linear TV viewing time is still above three hours, three hours, 15 minutes. And the huge difference versus the US, we have brand innovators here, in the US it's two hours, 30 minutes somewhere. So it's a big discrepancy between the US and Europe. So US is absolutely not Europe and the other way around. And we have here global brands. How do you take a decision about the media? So you need to understand the solid facts and figures of, of what's a reality. And yes, there is a shift to on-demand. There is a shift for, to, uh, you know, to watch content somewhere else, maybe on another device or maybe at another time. This is what we're bringing uh, you know, streaming uh, platforms into play. But what is interesting is you, in Europe, if you take France and Germany, for, for example, 75% of the time you're spending with video in a day is still within the linear feed. If you go to Italy, it's still, it's still above 85%. If you go in the UK, yes, it's more advanced, more uh, digital. We are around 70% still with linear TV. So you see, you know, there's a big, big, big thing that we need to take into account. And yes, we need to bring uh, additional things to the to the to the consumers thanks to uh, streaming platforms. You have ITVX here in the UK. We are launching M6 Plus uh, at the end of the month in May in France. With M6, we have RTL Plus in uh, in Germany. Uh, we have nearly 10 million subs at the moment. It's a hybrid AVOD and subscription. We have Videoland, uh, and Videoland is a quite an, an extraordinary uh, story 
you know, it's not a RTL branded. Uh, you know, it's competing against Netflix, it's competing against Disney Plus, but it's still the number two uh, uh, platform in the Netherlands. So uh, we're really, really investing into digitization and uh, new forms of uh, delivering our content to the public. Okay, thank you. So on that point, and you mentioned it before around how TV can, can support other mediums or platforms people are spending in, I think it might be a little bit unpopular, but TV measurement has been under kind of ongoing scrutiny and has been criticised for, for, for a number of years. And that's not just this market. That kind of is... That will go pretty much in all markets. There, there is kind of question marks over the measurement of TV. Um, and that's probably due to the, the kind of rise of a favoured digital metrics that people feel like are a little bit easier to understand and are a little bit more immediate. What are you doing beyond what you just mentioned to kind of combat that? And is it working? Because it's difficult when you're not just measuring yourself, but you're measuring the impact you have on others. Um. Well, it's just in terms of just just you know, measurement of eyeballs. You know, as you're probably aware, we 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 have a, a joint industry, a JIC, a joint industry committee in Barb, um, that is funded by all of the broadcasters, both commercial and non-commercial, that, that that measures audience. It's panel-based measurement. It's it's just about to rise to seven and a half thousand homes. Um, Sky have a panel of 500,000 homes, and when they look at their viewing data on that panel, it's very similar to Barb. So the panel data really works. Um, um, but in terms of cross-platform, um, we have collaborated with the other broadcasters. Um, Sky, in particular, brought uh, a measurement uh, system from the US, from NBC Universal, called Seaflight. Uh, they brought it over to the UK. We've collaborated with them and created a cross-media measurement system in Seaflight, which launched about 18 months ago. It, it started uh, with, with relatively basic measurements. Um, so it's measuring deduplicated reach and frequency across linear and broadcast VOD. Um, it did it initially for one audience. We just launched with another, four, with another 14 audiences. That's free to use for, for any advertiser. Um, so that's kind of, in terms of the measurement of eyeballs, what we're doing. Um, uh, clearly, in the UK, there's a big project going on, driven by Isbar, called Origin. Um, we we have been, um, you know, in, had a very constructive dialogue with Origin over the last few years. Uh, we've got a couple of issues which we which we need to resolve, but we're we're kind of delighted. We'll be delighted to join them if we can resolve those issues. The two big ones for us are that it measures apples with apples. At the moment, Origin is. Um, is, is set up to measure a two-second view and compare it with a completed view. You know, we only charge on our digital platform for a completed view, and, and Origin wants to compare a two-second view with a completed view, and we don't think that's really fair. We think if you're going to have a measurement system, you should measure apples with apples. So that's the first thing we just need to resolve. And the second thing is, at the moment, Origin, uh, if we were to join as, as TV companies, we wouldn't get access to the, to the data. Um, uh, so we wouldn't see the final results of reach and frequency when, f when we feel that, that, that that's a reasonable thing to ask to be part of it. Um, so if we can resolve those two things, we, 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 we will be part of Origin, which will hopefully be a much bigger cross-media measurement system. So given Origin is originating from a, from a client perspective and there's clients backing it, and, and you've always spoken favourably about mm -hmm. it if you can resolve those, those issues, mm -hmm. it, is it likely that there is 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 there a, a barrier between the two second and the full completed view? Is is it a tech problem, or is it just because they can't get the others to agree to anything beyond two seconds? Um, at the moment, Origin just won't won't move on that point. Um, uh, I, I suspect because the, the look, I don't know the reason why, but I suspect because because Google and, and Meta are, are the, the main funders of it. That two, a two second view is important to them, but for us. We don't think it's it, it, it it's comparable. Mm. Okay. So, when we talk about measurement, and I think market-specific measurement is tricky when it comes to broadcast, and every kind of market has a different panel set. A lot of it's the same. Yes. Stefan, when you're looking at measurement and from a digital perspective, how are you talking to clients about it and agencies about it, and how does that differ from a broadcaster in market? Well, I think as a um, you know, pan-European company, 
we need to take into consideration the, 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 lo the local differences. There's no silver bullet about measuring uh, TV. It's very local based. Uh, it's driven by jigs, and we are supporting, highly supporting jigs all over the place. In every country, we are partnering with jigs. Uh, why? Because we need to have third-party measurement systems. That's that's at the basis of everything we uh, we do. There are multiple initiatives across Europe about you know cross-screen measurement, cross-platform cross measurement. To take an example, in France, we are launching uh, with via Mediametry. Uh, um, they will from next year onwards. Uh, incorporate CTV and streaming platforms to the uh, TV measurement system to deliver, you know, incremental reach uh, analysis, that kind of stuff. Um, if you look at RTL in the Netherlands, we've been partnering with the uh, whole media industry to change the panel uh, in uh, Holland in order to measure all different types of media, the ones who didn't want to participate were the global platforms for obvious reasons, data, privacy, and internal rules. That's really a pity, to be very honest. And last but not least, you know, if you, we want to go into the digital world, I think we have an in interesting uh, experience in Spain with AntennaTrust. They decided to shift from a GRP-based to a CPM. So they, they did the move from CPM this year, uh, no, last year in April. It's been a year now. Uh, very good experience. They are making more money than the competitors. Mediaset, uh, Telecinco, and I think they will switch gradually to this uh, new, uh, let's say, uh, benchmark on the Spanish market. May maybe this is something for coming into Europe in other countries uh, anytime soon. That's interesting, I think, because to, to, to know that they've been able to switch, make more money out of it, that is probably a kind of a North Star for a lot of broadcasters in Europe. Absolutely. So I think technology quite, quite presently has created unprecedented um, kind of opportunities for innovation in media. And we've seen that with, with platforms that have been built. What do you see now from now the emerging trends around content creation, distribution and consumption given there's so many options? Is there, is there something you think is coming that, that people aren't aware of yet? that is going to change the way that we consume content, distribute it? Uh, I don't know about nothing we're, and something we're not aware of. <clears throat> I, think, um, I think what's going to happen, look, what's going to happen certainly in the UK over the next 10 years in terms of distribution is we are on, the, we are on a path from moving from, a, from, from being a, a television business that is uh, broadcast uh, to a television Business that will be delivered via IP. Uh, we've got, you know, we're, we're we're just at the start of that journey, but over the next ten years, we will move to being almost 100% delivered via IP. And that what what that what the opportunity that delivers us as broadcasters, or we won't be broadcasters then. We'll be television businesses over IP because we won't be broadcasting. Um, it it delivers the opportunity of of the entirety of our inventory being addressable. Now, whether we choose to sell that addressably or not will be an, with, is another question. But that's the big opportunity. As soon as, soon as our live and our on-demand is delivered via IP, then we, we know much more about the viewer and we can do a lot more interesting stuff with advertisers. So I think that, that's going to be the big innovation over the next few years. But look, I think, I think other areas where I think you'll see innovation certainly coming out of ITV over the next few years will be Certainly in the retail media space, we know we've partnered with big retailers over the last couple of years, Tesco and Boots, where we've integrated their data sets into our, into our own programmatic platform, Planet V, which allows advertisers to create audiences using not just our first party data, but also uh, Tesco and Boots data, and we'll be adding more data sets to that. But I think the whole commerce and shoppable side of the world will start to really take off over the next few years. So I think those, those are the two big things we're seeing is that journey to IP uh, and I think that opportunity around commerce and shoppability. So shoppability is an interesting point because if you were to get to advertisers earlier and they could be integrated in some of the content that you are creating, be it for your own platforms or for others, mm -hmm. which you do a lot of mm -hmm. uh, with ITV Studios, is that something that you're going to try and educate people to get uh, become 
come earlier in the journey so that they can become part of the programming and then create it, make it shoppable? Yeah, so, so look, integrating brands into shows we've been doing for some time. The, area that, the other area that I think has really started to explode, we've got 13 productions, uh, well, 13 shows in production today that are fully advertiser funded. So the advertiser is 100% funding those shows because they want to be part of that show and integrate into that show and create brand assets and use that around that show and, and use that show IP. Um, that, that's a massive increase year on year, and, and I think that's an area we, we, we expect. You know, we're, 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 we're resourcing up for it because it's an area that I think will, will really grow. Yeah, I think that that definitely has exploded over the last mm. few years around brands wanting to be part of mm -hmm. a content journey rather than just mm. buying spots in a piece of content that they think is yeah. aligned to their brand. Stefan, on the, on the piece around distribution of content, you obviously have a number of broadcast and publisher partners all around Europe. How are you seeing people do that differently? You know, are people doing it differently to ITV here in the UK? And is there, is there someone particularly doing it really well? Well, I think ITV is doing pretty well, that's clear. <laughs> it's not because uh, Kelly is here, but I think I was uh, always amazed by uh, the way they, uh, they do. I think they are the forefront of many uh, digital uh, developments. Um, but I think we do it in, in a slightly uh, maybe different mode. You know, there are some uh, pure AVOD like ITVX. We have a hybrid model in, uh, in Germany where we believe that we, we believe also in subscription, but in part as well in uh, uh, advertising funded VOD. Um, to come back to your question on innovation and techno technology, I think there are many ways where technology is really uh, something that brings uh, you know, I, I, uh, uh, additional and premium to the audience. Uh, just a word about AI. I was really impressed last week to see and to have some information from our news room in RTL in Germany. Now they are using AI and you have 15 editors looking every day, fact checking things to AI, whether it's a deep fake or not a deep fake, what is a video, what can you trust? And you know, thanks to your investments, you brands in our companies, we are able to deliver those types of additional services and technology to make sure that independent journalism prevails. So this is one thing uh, that technology brings. And the second is, I fully agree with uh, Kelly, at RTL, we believe in a, uh, whether it's five years, seven years, 10 years, I don't know, it's really different from one country to the other, but it will be a 100% ad-served world in linear. And I think linear hasn't unlocked yet all the possibilities that digital can bring, shoppable, additional formats, interactive formats, etc. addressability. Uh, we will sell addressable advertising to everyone, of course not. You still need to massively reach your consumer in a very limited of uh, amount of time. And this is what TV is bringing. High reach, very limited amount of time. But what TV can unlock tomorrow, thanks to addressability, is really additional new brands. You know, you're looking at very specific targeting niches that on, do not have access to television yet. And I think that's really a, a fantastic opportunity for us. I completely agree. And I think, you know, as long as you can get the balance between price of content or premium content and the yield on addressable advertising, then, then I think everyone's set to win. So Absolutely. we have to wrap up. We don't have time for questions, but I want to kind of leave on uh, 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 both of you. We work in a very kind of progressive um, and adaptable industry. So I think there's lots to be excited about. What excites mm. you about kind of the future of, of media and content and what are the two to three things that are exciting you about the future? God, um, well, I think content for me, uh, I, 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 you know, working at a television company, the thing I love is the content. So like, I'm very excited for the rest of this year. We've got some fantastic content coming up. We've got the European Football Championships arriving. Uh, Britain's Got Talents on, on air. We've got some incredible drama. Uh, so I'm always excited about, uh, about content. Um, but look, in terms of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, I think this journey to IP, this journey to addressability uh, is, is, is really exciting. I think the, out, the, the early signs of what we're seeing in outcomes for me, uh, look, I've, just, I've sold television my entire career. I really believe in it. I, I've seen 
what it can do to businesses. I see it every single day, particularly new to TV advertisers, when they come on television for the first time, to watch how television builds their business is, is really exciting. So I think, I think what we're doing in outcomes, actually for the first time, because I think the hardest thing for CMOs often is trying to persuade the board, trying to persuade the finance director yeah. to, you know, to invest in television without the evidence. Make and that I, jump. Yeah, and I think, I think what we're doing in outcomes, I think, um, is really exciting. Stefan. So for us, obviously, content, you know, uh, a couple of uh, information. You know, RTL Group is spending 6 billion euro in content every year. So that's a big amount of money, um, of course. Uh, not enough money versus the global players, but I think still quite a quite a big amount of money. So we really, really want to continue to invest in the premium content. That's our our baseline. 100%. Um, uh, I, I believe in a 100% digital world and ad-served world, and I think this will unlock, as I said earlier, many many opportunities for for you to connect with our consumers. And I believe, you know, TV is a lot more than just television. When you're combining the power of digital, the power of data, uh, you have a, a huge power in your hands to connect with, uh, with efficiency with your consumers. And the last point for us from an international perspective, uh, you know, you have TV super big in UK. We have RTL super big in Germany, MCs super big in, in France. But when it comes to uh, uh, bringing alternative to global giants, we need to join forces. We need to uh, connect with each other. We need to partner, as we are doing, to facilitate, to simplify the access to our uh, premium inventory and to make it, uh, you know, for you guys, simple to buy and maybe give you a little bit of uh, uh, advice on, on the... Uh, 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 you know, the, the, the lighthouses that we represent across Europe. I think that's very important. Thank you both for honesty and kind of giving everyone a flavour of what's to come for you guys. Uh, if everyone can kind of give a round of applause for Kelly and Stefan, please. Thank, Thank you. you.